it's Lady Ada. Hey everybody, and welcome to my desk. It's me, Lady Ada, here where all the engineering gets done. And uh, I've been working on a lot of hardware this week. A lot of prototypes came in, some worked, some didn't quite work. Um, so maybe let's get started. Is there any updates or news, Mr. Lady No, Ada? lots of big things okay. going on all during the week. So stay tuned to our site, our blog, all the socials and more. And uh, special thanks to everyone who... Uh, Likes humor. We had a fun April Fool's joke. Uh, we did not merge with Ticketmaster. It is not Ticket Fruit. We're not using that to sell Raspberry Pis. Lots of subtle humor in there. Thanks uh, to the folks who uh, got it and uh, played along. It's only once a year. And then we post a bunch of fun logos. So you can yes. check out our website. Yeah, we okay. just we had some fun art stuff. Okay, Take it away. Let's kick it off. So let's go to um, do we want to the computer or the overhead. Let's go to the overhead. And let's, uh, sorry, I was just um, focusing the overhead. So the first um, board that I got in, the prototype that I tested this week, uh, I got in, uh, hold on, let me just move this forward so I can get to it a little bit easier. Whoa, boards everywhere. Um, so I'm making um, lots of pie cowbells, and those are boards that uh, work with uh, the Raspberry Pi uh, Pico, so it's kind of a narrow, thin board compared to the Feather. Uh, it's got two 20-pin connectors. Um, so this is the CAN bus cowbell, and it uses the MCP2515 and the TJA1051 as a CAN transceiver. And basically, over SPI, you can communicate with any CAN bus. So I tested this board with our Feather M4 CAN, and this was sending messages, and this was receiving, and this was receive sending, and this was receiving. Everything worked really well. A um, couple of things just, you know, I thought since I had a problem with my other board, I talked about some of the things I found and how do I debug stuff. So obviously I do functionality tests. I test every function that I want to. I test every pin that is exposed. So for example, there is an interrupt pin on the MCP, the when it receives a message, instead of pulling the chip, it'll toggle uh, interrupt pin. And so, um, you know, I verified that I wrote an example that tested that. Um, I also tested uh, the reset line, and that's when I realized that I had a mistake here. So um, this gray wire is because this pad should have been shorted uh, to this pin. But um, in Eagle CAD in particular, you know, this pin was labeled reset, and this was labeled bang reset, like a reset with a bar over it. And so they weren't actually connected as a net, um, so it's just a typo mistake. Um, but I was able to, like, you know, I tested the reset functionality, realized that they weren't connected, um, so I jumpered it. And that kind of error is one where um, if there's, like, a missing pin connection and I verify by soldering a wire, you know, I, I don't usually um, reorder prototypes. I'm usually, like, ready to go into production. Um, I tested the STEM IQT port, made sure, like, you know, I plugged something into the I2C, made sure it powered, it worked. Test the button. Uh, there's a terminator jumper here. Um, you do have to have at least one, ideally two terminators on a CAN bus of 120 ohms each. Um, and uh, I verified that when I cut this trace, uh, this stopped working basically because the, um, without the, the terminator, the, um, the CAN bus uses, I think, either pull-ups or pull-down resistors. And so there's this, you know, the uh, sawtooth wave instead of a square wave. And so um, data wasn't passing back and forth very nicely. And then I shorted the terminator, worked again, you know, verified low is low, high is high, you know, ground is ground. And then um, everything worked really well. And so, like, you know, thankfully, once in a while, uh, boards work on the first run, uh, which is great. Uh, and in this case, uh, that happened. And then I went to test... Um, the DVI uh, bell. So this one, um, this is, <coughs> pardon me, I'm getting over cold. Um, this is, uh, you know, a lot like our DVI feather where there is, um, you know, a, a connector that can go to an HDMI display. It's only digital video, it's not audio or ethernet. Uh, and this is a mini DVI. And we actually talked about this board and this connector, I think, three weeks ago on the Great Searching Desk of Lady Ada where I sourced this um, nice mini HDMI connector because a full-sized HDMI wouldn't fit. It's, uh, it's just too wide for the board. But the mini DVI works quite nicely, and it's the same connector used on the Pi Zero. So, like, we already stock the adapters and the cables and everything. And I put this together and I plugged it into an HDMI monitor and it had like this really weird like flickering effect. Like you could see that there was video, 
there, but it would like immediately shut down. And I tried another display, it didn't work. And then uh, I actually tried it with the um, video capture that we're using like right now on like Descalade. I was like, oh, well, let me just plug it in. And that did work. And so I could see the video and I was like, well, something's working. But I wasn't sure what, and I was like, well, is there like, um, you know, is it that that Pico, right? Because the first thing you have to figure out is like, where is where is the error? Um, and could, with hardware, it could be so many things, especially when there's an add-on board. So, you know, the first version that I put together had been with stacking headers. And I was like, well, maybe the stacking headers are adding too much capacitance or something. So I went with, um, you know, the shorter plug together headers. And then I was like, well, maybe there's other IO pins that are interfering, or maybe the pins themselves for some reason don't work with DVI. I didn't actually test that pin um, collection. So what I did is I, I wired up a Pico um, to a DVI breakout and this worked great. So I was like, okay, those pins definitely work. Like my code is generating the signal on the right pins because it's like the same code. Um, I just wired it the way it, you know, it is on the schematic and this worked fine. So. I knew it wasn't the pins, and this has a ton of capacitance. Like this, you know, breadboard is is in these wires, even though they're fairly short. Um, you know, if this is able to generate signal just fine, there, you know, this PCB definitely should be. And especially it was weird because it kind of worked, and that's actually kind of the toughest. Like when things kind of work, it's like there's so many things that could be wrong. Um, and then what else did I try? Well, and then I tried like, okay, what well, other GPIO could be interfering? So I only soldered in um, the connectors, the, the ground and data connectors for the DVI. So like none of these other accessories would be interfering. And that still wasn't working. Although, although one time I plugged it in to my monitor and it worked okay. So I was like, okay, there's something like weird going on. Um, and then, uh, you know, the last <coughs> thing I was like, well, you know, I don't know if it's, you know, going to be very uh, illuminating, but I thought, well, let's probe each uh, trace to make sure that's going from, you know, maybe the connector's loose, or maybe this adapter. I tried different HDMI cables, and I probed them, and I could tell that the signal was going through, and then I plugged in an HDMI cable into the monitor to just make sure, like, the signal was still going through. Even though it's a very high-speed signal, my scope is good enough. It's a like one gigahertz scope. So, you know, I, I could see the waveform, although adding the capacitance of the pro probably was kind of, you know, is going to make the signal a little bit more rounded. And I noticed when I plugged it in to HDMI cable, the signal went short. It shorted down to ground. And I was like, that's really weird. Is the cable bad? I tried a different cable. When I plugged in the cable, it was shorted. When I disconnected the cable, it worked. And I was like, okay, I got to check my pit out. And so, um, you know, I looked at my connectors and I was like well these look right you know there's like the TX oh sorry let's go to the uh, computer I, just, I jumped to the yeah sorry I got I just got so excited about the story um so I jumped to my computer and I was like okay you know you know two positive is going to the t you know TX two positive the negative I was like oh maybe I swap the negative to positives um and then I was like well let me check the pin out in case like I got the clocks or the data's mixed up and there's like some cross signaling. Um, so I went to, you know, the Dookie page for the connectors that I purchased. Um, and I looked and I realized like, ooh, I totally like got this kind of messed up. And see if you can spot the error. So here, pin one is uh, TX2 positive. But pin one should actually be ground. It should be the shield. These two pins are swapped. So it should be ground, positive, negative, ground, positive, negative. But what I did is positive, ground, negative, positive, ground, negative. So I, I, I messed up when I did the pin definition. And this happens whenever I use a new connector or a new chip. It's so common. Um, I, I often, I not often make a mistake. I try to check, but it's, I'm in a rush, I'm tired. You know, I don't quite read the data sheet right. Um, so what happened is, is that the positive and ground were swapped, the negative worked. And so it's differential. And so like, you, you know, the uh, video capture card that Phil has is really good quality and it was it's meant to deal with like really terrible signal generators. And so it was like, well, you know, you're missing like your positive differential, but the negative is there and compared to ground, like the signal's okay. So, it, you know, it was able to extract the, the HDMI signal from it. Um, but yeah, that's definitely gonna cause problems. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to fix the definition. I'm going to do another spin of the board, even though I'm like 99% sure that this was going to solve everything. 
I'm still going to order only a couple PCBs and, and verify. So, you know, I, I learned stuff. Um, and then I thought I would quickly show. So that's my, let me close out the DVI bell. I'm going to revise that. Um, and, oh, yeah, and then this was the, um, I was like trying to compare, well, hold on. Uh, basic top. I, you know, I compared against um, this, which interestingly enough, I think, I don't think I messed this up. I think the full size HDMI does have a different pinout, and that's why I was confused. Although I, I pulled this up to make a note of myself to verify that it is, um, in this case, it is positive ground, negative, positive ground, negative. But, you know, now that I'm looking, I should actually um, verify that that's also um, the correct pinout. But the DVI feather works great, so I don't know, maybe. I'll do that in my own time. Okay, how much, uh, let's see. How are we doing on time, Mr. Lady Ada? Oh, yeah, good. Okay, um, I thought I'd show some quick, <clears throat> some quick prototypes. Hold on, let me put away my DVI stuff. Let's go back to the overhead. All right, so DVI feather, gotta redesign that. Um, <clears throat> uh, so I got some uh, cool prototypes that I haven't even like plugged in. Who knows if they work. Um, so these are uh, DWM, um, 100 sorry dw1000 feather wing and feather so this is the rp2040 with the dwm uh, module and these are ultra wideband modules i've never used them before but they're kind of the only thing that does what they do which is indoor locationing so um from what i can tell if you have three or four of these in a room and you put them like in the corners like like kitty corners of the room then you can have a node that's floating around in the room and it can like do really good like within a couple centimeters location indoors which is um a common thing that people want to do especially for art projects or like um like scientific projects they want to track something within a large container room building but you can't get GPS indoors, and Bluetooth isn't really designed for that. Like, you can do rough, like, are you kind of in the approximate area? But Bluetooth isn't really um, good for that. So ultra-wideband, apparently, this is this does the job. These modules are not cheap. Um, they're, I think, like 15 bucks a piece. But, again, they're kind of the only thing that does the job. So it's the DWM-1000. I think there's a new version of the 3000. But I'm going to start with the 1000 because it's, like... I can get these modules and they're, you know, they're available and like the 3000 are pin compatible. So we can always, um, update from there. Okay. So I think that's, oh, and then I got one more prototype. This is the, um, feather can. So this is the, uh, RP 2040 with can bus built in and I couldn't get this working. So I got to figure out what did I get wrong? Maybe I swapped some pins around again. We'll find out. Okay. So um, with that, I think we're ready to go on to the great search. Where in the world is that part I need? The great search with DJ Key. The great search brought to you by DigiKey and Adafruit every single week. Lady Ada, use their powers of engineering to help you, yes, you find things on digikey.com. Lady Ada, what are you looking for this week? Okay. So this week, I'm, um, we've already done various great searches on FPC connectors and cables, but I need a specialty one this week. So let's go to the overhead and I'll show what I'm looking for and why. Okay, so, um, so we've got these boards called Cutie Pies and these are adorable little microcontroller boards. And we've had like a wide variety of add-ons that we do. So hold on one second. So like, you know, we've got like a little keycap add-on and we've got a little add-on that adds like a button and a NeoPixel or an LED grid. Okay, so what I wanted to do is uh, create an add-on that would let people connect um, the Cutie Pie to our TFT uh, displays. So almost all our TFT displays now come with an iSpy connector, which is a cute logo that um, Mr. Lady had come up with. And this is a flip top 18 pin 0.5 millimeter pitch FPC cable. Looks like this, right? And then when you plug it into here, it brings all the IO connections for the, F the um, TFT, like all of these pins down here 
uh, the SPI, the backlight, SD card, whatever, all come out this cable. And so you don't have to do like this gross wiring where you solder to all these pads. You just have this like slim, cute cable and it goes to whatever you know your peripheral is. And we've got a, um, a breakout that you can connect it to, uh, you know, so you can have a cable a couple centimeters long. This is elsewhere. This is now easier to mount because you don't have um, all the wires. So I thought it would be cool if there was like something where like, oh, you know, this cable is, you know, kind of the same width as the cutie pie. Like maybe you could plug in and then like so, and then you would have like, uh, you know, ESP32 or um, SAMD21 or RP2040 just driving your little display. You can make uh, great little display projects. Very common. A lot of people like to use these TFT displays. So I did design a board and I used the same connector here. So this connector, again, 18 pin, 0.5 millimeter pitch. So I made like a, a breakout and I was like, well, maybe I'll have it like come out the middle because the issue I had, as we can see, that connector is like a super, super tight fit. Like if you measure this connector, hold on, if I measure this connector, sorry, if I measure between these two um, contacts, it's like 13.2 millimeters, which is just like, you know, a hair on, it's basically 0.5 inches, right? It should be 0.5 inches. But what happened is that this connector is 0.52 uh, or 0.53. And so the connectors are actually bowed out a little bit and then I just bent the pins back in. But really this connector should be narrower than one half inch um, because this, you know, this whole thing is um, 0.7, you know, the hair over 0.7, uh, and then each one of these is exactly 0.1 inch, so, it, you know, it needs to be 0.5 inch or less. But the connector we've got right now isn't 0.5 inch or less, and I actually realized it's, it's there's a lot of connectors are, are fairly wide, but we want to find one that is um, bottom contact. I do like the flip top because I feel like it makes it really easy for people. Like anything with, especially if I do something with this style, flip top, you actually have a shot of opening and closing. If it's a pullout, you know, usually the little ears are um, much wider and they're going to be hard to, to get in. So I want it flip top, bottom contact, 18 pin, 0.5 millimeter pitch. So let's go to the computer and uh, I will take a look. So we were looking at this HDMI connector, which we're done with. So let's go back to DigiKey and I'm going to look for FPC connector. Let's start with that. And I want a connector assembly and there's like 18,000. So it's a good shot that I have something here. Okay. A lot of options. So this might be something, you know, just looking at the photos. Again, I like to look at the photos just to be like, am I on the right path? This one, you can see the width. Um, you know, I can't, I'm moused over, but you can see how the contacts are in the center, and then there's just a lot of space on the sides for mechanical strength. Um, this one, too, like you can see the pins. The connector is significantly wider than the pins. I want something more like this, not like this. Let me see. I also don't like that. Like this one, right? You see how it's like it's not too much wider. Okay, so let's get um, the specifications we need out of the way. So number one, I want it to be an active product in stock. I want it to be 18 contacts and the pitch is 0.5 millimeter. So that should, that should really um, pare down a lot of things. Yeah, we're down to like 100 out of 18,000. I also want it to be in stock right now. Okay, so about 50 out of all of those. Um, the FPC thickness, I don't really, you know, I find that it doesn't really matter. Oh, I do need to have it be bottom contact, right? I want that. And then I think I want flip lock, but I'll look at the slide locks in case there's something interesting there. Materials I do not care too much about. So it's about half of them are bottom contact. Okay. So then, you know, looking again, this one significantly wider. And I'll show you how to read the data sheets. Uh, this one, sorry, this one is not the useful data sheet. But like this one. Okay, so see how the, there's the pins and then the, the body is wider. But how wide is that body? Let's find out. You go to the data sheet and hopefully this one will be useful. It'll have the, yeah. So what happens is that for FPC connectors, 
you're not going to get like the all of the measurements in the diagram. Instead, what you have to do is you look for like these letters. So in this case, I want to know the A width, right? So this width here. A is the total width. B is the width between the two pins. And then there's like C, which is like the, you know, connector width. I want A. A. And it's not always the same letter, by the way. And then you go down here and then you look up how many positions you have. And uh, in this case, it's 18. And then they say A is 13.3. And I need, hold on. I want something that's 0.5 inches, um, which is 12.7. So I want like maybe 13, but really less than 12.7 uh, millimeters. This is too wide too wide this also you know some of them i'm like okay this or also looks too wide this looks too wide um maybe maybe you know and so i started kind of looking through these and i was like a lot of these are really wide and then i was like you know first off let me um you can't search by width by the way i was like thinking like ooh, is there a size now so i thought like well let's do it by price and i can start with pricing because you know i want i do want to have an inexpensive um connector and some of these were, were uh, fairly promising. Some of them didn't have images. This is actually a vertical style. This is pointing up, which I don't want. Um, also fairly wide, fairly wide, kind of wide. And then I came down to this Amphenol one is like super wide. Also wide, wide, wide. And then I came to this one and I was like, ooh, that looks nice. Because you see how there's the contacts and then the... Um, mounting tabs but it's it's this is a very slim looking um connector so let's take a look um so again what i want to look for is the a width because this is the generic you know this is just like n pins so i want a so let's look down at a so i have dimension a and this is like weird because the contact quantity is over here contact quantity 18 width 11.5 which is well less than 12.7 so this is my winner and it's amphenol so they're like you know known to be good and there's actually quite a few others but the pricing is very good um you know it's about 40 cents in quantity and uh you know it's a nice i like that's gold plate over here um i like that it's flip lock um, and Amphenol connectors are, are like pretty good quality connectors. I've never had any issues with them. So I'm not going to worry about like the little tab breaking off. So this is my great search find. All right. That's a great search. Where in the world is that part I need? The great search with DJ Key. All right. We're going to bounce this week because we got a bunch of stuff to do get set up for the weekend more stay Thank hydrated so everybody for hanging out with us tonight mm. see you on the shows during the week all right thanks everybody bye everybody